Welcome back TCS viewers. Today we are coming to you from the Grassy Lakes area in Canmore and it's a family excursion. As you can see the first TCS video I'm going to do carrying a baby. I've got my daughter Maddie here with her cute blue eyes. And because it's a family excursion, we're going on a hike, I've brought the Panasonic ZS100. This is what we're going to look at today. This is the perfect kind of family travel camera, or at least we hope so. We're getting a nice 10 times zoom on here, but we're still getting a one inch sensor. So we're going to test this camera today on the trail here and see how it does. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. First off, my lav mic is here on the back of the baby carrier. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. Hopefully it's okay. Number two, the light today is horrible. So go easy on Jordan. He's going to be having a rough time today but we should have fun we're gonna hike up to the lakes and we're gonna take the easy route today Now Panasonic as a company really did pioneer the long lens and the compact bodies, even going all the way back to the very popular TZ series and the FZ series, they always knew how to make great long lenses with big ranges and to keep them into fairly compact bodies. And this became very popular because it's so nice to carry a camera this size and yet have a huge zoom. Now last year the huge craze was definitely the 30 times zoom. I mean Nikon, you know Canon, you got the PowerShot 710 and of course uh, Panasonic making a whole bunch of cameras. The ZS45s, the 50s, the 60s, you know, they're starting to push the 30 times optical zoom. Now, this is a huge, tremendous range, but there is always a downside. You can only put so much into such a small body. If you have a big zoom range, that means that something has to give, and it's going to be the sensor size poor low light performance, not very good dynamic range. So now enters the ZS100. Now what we've got here is a 10 times zoom in a body the exact same size. But this 10 times zoom now does give us a one inch sensor. Now speaking of big photographic trends in recent times, it's also the one inch sensor itself. I mean, the Nikon 1 series, Sony's RX100 series, you know, everybody seems to be jumping on this. Now Canon have a whole bunch of X cameras with the one inch sensor. It's a great compromise between image quality and compactness. And and now we have it in the ZS100. So we're hoping we're going to get good low light performance, hopefully even the ability to get some soft backgrounds, thin depth of field. This should be a very exciting test today. Now I do have the ZS60 with me here today and it does bring up a very interesting handling point. Uh, both cameras have these front focusing rings. In fact, on the ZS100, it's even more expanded, easier to turn. Both have very, very similar sizes, layouts of viewfinders in a similar position. You are getting an over million dot EVF now on the ZS100. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I do have a complaint right away off the bat with the handling. The ZS60 had this funky kind of rubber grip knob on the front, and on the back, your thumb was covered against and buttressed against this rubber thumb stop. And it gives you a very secure feel. I like it. I can hold it with three fingers. I don't feel like I'm going to lose it. The ZS100 certainly looks beautiful, but we've got this all metal front fascia here now, but there's absolutely no grip. And to compound that problem, on the back, there's no thumb stopper. It's just bare metal. In fact, the only thing keeping your thumb from falling off is the 4K photo burst button. Problem with that is it's super easy to push down. So I actually really prefer the old grip on the ZS60. Now you've got the thumb wheel up here, you know, that you got to be able to have a secure feel there. And I don't know, this just doesn't work very well. I wish we had the rubber. All right, so rounding out just the overall design and handling on the ZS100, the viewfinder is nice. I like that it's a higher res, but it's still very small tunnel vision kind of thing. Way better, of course, than the back screen only if you get really bright sunlight, but you know, you're not going to love using it compared to one of the modern mirrorless cameras. Customizable buttons on the back, and you know, Panasonic is still using their quick menu system. It does work very well. My only issue here, though, is we don't have a dedicated ISO button, and that would have been really, really nice. Now, you can customize one of the other buttons, but it means you're going to lose 4K photo burst or you know post focus something like that but I would still do that because I do change my ISOs on a regular basis so you are going to be depending on this quick menu quite a bit to change things like overall exposure focusing modes you know any sort of quality settings that kind of stuff 
Now the ZS60 had post focus, I wanna talk about that next, but with the smaller sensor, you didn't really get to play with the depth of field, so post focus shines a little bit more here. Now take a look at this photo just to show you what's going on. With post focus, your camera basically does multiple shots with a focus stacking effect, and then afterwards you can decide what you wanna have in focus and what you wanna leave out. You've also got peaking to just show you exactly where the depth of field falls. With a ZS100 like this though, you can clearly see how we can differentiate me and Maddie to the background and back and forth. So very useful if you're not quite sure of the focus, very useful if you just wanna play with depth of field afterwards, it's a neat effect. All right, so I found a squirrel down the trail and I shot it with the ZS100, but of course, before I could switch over to the ZS60 and take the same shot, he ran away. I wanted to show you guys the difference between 250 millimeter on a 10 times zoom and then the 720 millimeter, but take a look at these two shots here, just down into the main reservoir. You can see there, yeah, it's a dramatic difference in zoom range. And there'll be some situations where that 30 times zoom is gonna excel. I mean, wildlife, sports, that kind of stuff. It does give you the confidence you have a lens to handle anything. Still, I would rather have the one inch sensor and remember 20 megapixels we've got a good amount of resolution to crop now the only issue i have with the zs 100s lens is even at 10 times because we're pushing the you know the one inch sensor which is bigger than normal we're getting 2.8 to 5.9 and that does kind of offset some of the thin depth of field we'd like to play with take a sony rx 100 mark 3 or mark 4 for example it can get some very thin depth of field so get closer here if you want to get those soft backgrounds now, of course, the ZS100 is a fairly expensive camera as these travel cameras go, but one of the things they've added to really justify that is Panasonic's depth from defocus, DFD autofocusing. Lightning quick. Again, we really haven't found anything faster, and on a small cam like this, it's great to know that you're not going to be outgunned when it comes to focusing. Touchscreen is also excellent, and again, with that autofocus, I can touch wherever I want it to go. Nice and quick, nice and responsive. My only complaint about the touchscreen actually has nothing to do with the touchscreen. It has to do with this terrible thumb grip again. I'm really not liking this today because it's right next to the metal here and they're flush. So there's no bump. There's no change in elevation. So naturally you put your thumb over here. There's not much place to put it anyways, and it easily goes to the top of the screen. Now this is gonna kick you into function settings by accident, like the Wi-Fi trigger that I just did now, or when you're trying to focus, you're gonna think you're focusing where you touched last, and you're gonna find, no, it's the upper right corner. So I don't like that design, but otherwise the screen's great, the touch screen works fantastic, and the focusing is lightning quick. Now with this lens being a 10 times zoom, you're not gonna get a ton of aperture variability. Now we've talked about the wides, 2.8, to 5.9, your maximum wide open apertures, your minimum tight aperture is f8. Now, that makes sense on a one inch sensor. I mean, keep in mind, if it went to f11 or f16, you get a ton of diffraction. I mean, the Sony RX100 does let you go to f11, but this is only gonna go to f8. The only downside is at the telephoto range, you really don't have much room to move. I mean, you better like that moderate kind of aperture. Now Panasonic have also brought back their 4K photo burst mode. Basically, you're gonna shoot eight megapixel shots at very, very high frame rates, you know, just like video. With faster shutter speeds, of course, we're looking for sharp stills. It is handy because it lets you get wildlife and sports and action, you know, pick out just that perfect moment. I also like it for shots like macro where it's quite difficult to handhold things properly or any sort of tricky situation like that. You know, having that huge burst means that some of those are gonna be in focus most likely. So nice features. Now keep in mind, if you do things like the post focus or you do the 4k photo burst even going into the 4k video there is going to be a tighter crop keep that in mind you're going to lose some of that wide angle all right you know image quality i want to talk about that next because that's one of the main reasons to get the zs100 you're getting that bigger chip now my whole talk is going to be prefaced with this statement you know comparing to the zs60 which is a pretty sweet camera hey man you can keep that in your mouth we're not seeing a huge difference in image quality i mean the benefits you're looking for are things like dynamic range, high ISO performance, and thinner depth of field. Now, first off, depth of field. If we look at the lenses, both shot around 120 millimeter mark. You know, it's a good general purpose telephoto, getting quite close. You can see the one inch sensor gives you a slightly softer background, but they're very, very similar looking. And again, the ZS100, I think why people always say that one inch chips are giving such thinner depth of field is because usually they're coupled with very wide aperture lenses. But what about high ISO? Surely that has to be a big jump. 
And actually, the ZS100 performs beautifully at high ISO. I mean, I'd have no problem using this thing at 3200 ISO on a regular basis. And the ZS100 can push up to 12,800. So that's a big benefit as well. But even the ZS60, I was impressed with. Looking here at the high ISO files, it does a pretty good job too. It still maintains good detail. It doesn't get mushy. Now, you're going to find, though, that it's got way more chromatic noise than the ZS100. So, folks, you know, one of the reasons to buy the ZS100, it's that one inch chip. It's not going to blow you away. It's not, you know, totally way above into the stratosphere better than a point and shoot camera, but it is significant improvements and it will beat the crap out of any phone on the planet. All right, guys, I'm bouncing here because I'm going to try to get this baby to go to sleep. She's close. Now, while we're next to this pine tree, one of the things that I really like about smaller cameras like a ZS60, for example, that small sensor also means really close macro. You can get really, really close at the wide angle, although you are doing that at the expense of working distance. You basically have to mash the camera right in there. Now, the ZS100 has actually been really enjoyable. I'm not going to get anywhere close to one-to-one -to -one macro. However, I get a better working distance with a bigger sensor, and I've also been finding that whether I'm at about 25 millimeters or around 110 millimeters, wider telephoto, I can still get the same kind of macro composition, but I can change the background, change the perspective and the compression. So that's been really, really cool. Now keep on top of that, that the image stabilization on this camera is fantastic. And we have things like the post focus capability, and we even have things like the 4K photo burst with the even tighter crop. And it means that I can get really good macros and have a really good shot at getting a photo in focus. So all in all, actually, I thought I was going to be disappointed. I thought the smaller sensor would do a better job, but this is pretty sweet. Is she asleep? Oh yeah, mission accomplished. It's video time. I'm Jordan, the guy who talks about video. And I'm going to talk pretty loud right now because we're actually recording this on the internal mic of the FZ100, which is also shooting me in 4K right now. Uh, and we're fighting a little bit because there's no built-in filter threads on this guy and no built-in neutral density filter. We're shooting 125 ISO at f8, that's as much as we can stop down, and it's still a little bit too bright. And that really drove me crazy today when I'm trying to get my images. I had to grab a filter, kind of wave it around in front of the lens, and for video, not a great idea because you might see the filter moving in the shot. Outside of that, I do really like the quality we get out of this. It's full 4K, it's very sharp. Uh, it doesn't have some of the cinema profiles that you'll see on the GH4, the G7, the Cine D, Cine V, but I actually prefer Panasonic's natural profile and that's included here. Uh, one thing that did really surprise me is we've actually got 120 frame 1080p recording built into this, which isn't in some of those higher end cameras, and it plays back in slow-mo for you automatically. Now there are no exposure controls in that, uh, so you're not going to be able to choose a really creative depth of field or something like that in the shot, but it's a pretty cool inclusion for a camera like this. The FZ100 really is targeting a more casual shooter, so some of those manual things might not be much of an issue, but they have really worked on stuff that would be important to family shooters. The autofocus is actually quite good, and the image stabilization is excellent, which it needed to be with a lens this long. Let's see some samples here right at 250 millimeters. I'm hand-holding these, and they're rock solid, honestly. So there are definitely some issues with usability if you're a more enthusiast-minded video shooter, but for casual users, the quality is very good and it's very intuitive. All right, folks, so we're going to call it a day. We had a really good time up here on the mountain, and uh, I enjoyed the ZS100. You know, it's a small, compact package. It's perfect for this kind of thing. You're just hiking, traveling, don't want to carry a bunch of heavy gear. I still felt like I could be very creative with this camera. There are still a few things that I don't like about such a small package or cramming everything in there. The thumb placement is terrible, and there's no need for that. They totally could have kept that from the ZS60. We also noticed the lens. You know, you're cramming this big zoom range in a small package. It gets a little soft at 250, but overall, it's very very versatile. You know, this camera is for people who want to have dynamic range still, low light capabilities. You know, if giant zoom range isn't your thing, if you're okay with even this 10 times zoom, which is very practical, this camera is going to give you a step up in image quality and it's still such a nice size. If not, if you want more zoom, honestly, the ZS60 is pretty close in image quality and it gives you killer zoom range up to 720. But I think overall, Panasonic's got another winner in this travel camera series. This is going to be a really nice way to go if you want the better video and the better quality. So if that's you, check it out. Don't forget, check us out on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our channel, write comments. You know, we're good about always getting back to people. So do write us, we will respond. And uh, goodbye from Maddie, she's awake now. And goodbye from me, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>